In our lab, we are looking at the mechanisms behind PTSD development. It might be a little weird to think that a little bitty one inch aquarium fish would be the best model for PTSD, but because they're extremely social, they have a good molecular background and the same type of basic structure like DNA, you find that in all organisms. And so that's why we can apply something like an aquarium fish or a zebra fish to human research. One of the biggest problem in studying PTSD is that we don't have good models and we cannot make induce PTSD in people to study PTSD. So we need a model system that mimic as close as human beings. And everybody likes to think of a lab mouse, but actually we want to show that zebrafish are better because they're so social. When you do any kind of PTSD induction, you have an immediate reaction. They become antisocial, which is extremely odd with their behavior. And on the molecular side, we look at how the zebrafish genomes already been sequenced and they have a lot of genes and proteins that are similar in humans. So if we see kind of molecular changes in zebrafish, then we can look at how it would affect humans. It's so important because we have a lot of stories nowadays, especially with the military and overseas, where soldiers come back and they suffer from PTSD and they're unable to cope with the normal life that we have. So what we want to look at is ways to kind of prevent that treatment from regressing because that kind of behavior uh, can cause neural degeneration, certain types of cancers, accelerated aging, and so it kind of leads into a bunch of other issues. We're also looking at any kind of treatment solutions that can prevent that.